Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTN Sports in Association with Round for Round Boxing, the new boxing game coming out on PC, Xbox and PlayStation 4. Check out our playlist for the latest fighters that have joined the roster. The latest fighter to join as of today, a few hours ago, James Buster Douglas, the first man to beat Iron Mike Tyson back in Tokyo to become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world that night. James Buster Douglas became undisputed champion, knocking out the then once invincible or considered invincible Iron Mike Tyson. So check out our roster. It's there on BWTM Sports. Check out the playlist. And also, it's at the end of this video as well. Okay. So, we have our fight. Jamal Charlo, the middleweight. The 160 man. The 160 king. In his, in his eyes. Against Matt Korobov. Now, originally, Jamal Charlo was meant to fight Willie Monroe, and I understand that Willie Monroe tested for something and is now being suspended and all the rest of it. Okay, fair enough. Slap and wrist, Mr. Willie Monroe. Or is it? See, this boxing business is a dirty old business. I'll tell you that now. It's a dirty old stinking business behind the scenes. You never know quite what is what, and who's doing what, and why they're doing it, or what the purpose is. Sometimes people just do things because... Somebody said something in an office, uh, it hasn't gone right. They want to see a fighter get beat. A fighter's gone above and beyond his um, his his or her place in, uh, in terms of the manager or the promoter or the advisor. And then from being a partnership, they want to see them get beat. It's more profitable for them to get beat, for them, that, for them to be actually a, um, a winner. Okay. So when I say here, this this fight here now is a better fight than the fight that was arranged. Uh, Willie Monroe, yes, he's slick, he can box and all the rest of it, but he's no puncher. In Matt Korobov, you have a totally different situation altogether. There's a few questions I want to know. I want to ask one question. How long has Matt Korobov been training? How long has he been training? Has he got off the couch and just started training for this fight? Because that's one way of setting Charlo up. Because you can set up and he goes and blasts up Matt Korobov in a round or two. And he's like, oh, well, so what? He knocked up Matt Korobov, but he ain't been doing anything of recent times. But I want to remind people who Matt Korobov is. Just to jog your memory, Matt Korobov was the guy that Peter Quillian, I believe, was going to either defend the title against or fight against. And he was told to step us. He stepped aside and gave up his WBO belt. Yeah. He gave up his WBO belt to, to avoid fighting Matt Korobov. Okay. So Matt Korobov then fights Andy Lee. You remember Andy Lee and Andy Lee. A lot of people thought Korobov was the man and Andy Lee put that straight with uh, his punching power. But Andy Lee is a world-class puncher. Let me, let you know that now he's a work he can punch andy lee can punch right and uh if he catch you that left hand you're in trouble ask peter quillin and uh, ask matt korobov they'll tell you all about the left hand of andy lee okay so but andy lee didn't go into that fight as a favorite i can tell you that now people were praying and hoping andy lee won that fight so when he won that fight it was a big victory for andy lee at the time so now Matt Korobov comes into this fight with an opportunity to fight to, first of all, win the, uh, well, is it the interim world championship? And also a chance for him to place himself among the elite middleweights in the world. He could get a fight against GGG. He could get a fight against Canelo if Canelo decides to come back at middleweight. He can get a fight against Danny Jacobs. He could become a player in the middleweight division. So there's incentives there. And the biggest incentive is, if he knocks off Jamal Charlo, who calls himself the 160 King, and it's looked devastating in the process of doing it. So the question I ask myself, boxing fans, is, is Jamal Charlo being set up? Matt Korobov's not the sort of guy that you generally, he's not the sort of guy that you just take as a, a warm-up fight. Matt Korobov is not a warm-up fight. Matt Korobov is not a, um, yeah, he's just a filler. He'll, you know, I'll have him for breakfast and I'll move on to the main course. Matt Korobov is a dangerous 160 
middleweight, a dangerous 160 middleweight. And I don't know how much time Jamal had time to prepare for Matt Korobov because he was preparing for um, the mongoose, Willie Monroe. So when you're preparing for Willie Monroe and then you suddenly have to change for um, Matt Korobov, it's a totally different situation. You've got a guy who's a bit of a mover, slickster, moves all the way around. And you've got a guy called Matt Korobov who is probably he's going to come to to land some punches. He's going to come to fight. Whereas Monroe's going to come to mess you about and slip and move and slip and slide and stick to the side. Korobov's going to come to trade. And Korobov can punch himself. So this, to me, has red alert written all over it. So Jamal Charles has to be very, 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 very dangerous to be careful in this fight. So he has to be very, very, very careful in this fight because this fight has upset written all over it. It is always the case, you know, the guy pulls out for some reason, uh, this time it's PEDs, and then all of a sudden Korob has gone in. But if Korobov, if Korobov had been training for Jamal Charlo, I'm not saying he beats Jamal Charlo, but if he'd been training for Jamal Charlo all this time, right, at, I'm just putting it out there, I'm not saying this is the case. Right, somebody's going to come to me. That's not the case. I understand if it's not the case, but I'm just saying I don't trust this boxing business one bit. If, if Jamal Charlo was preparing to fight um, the mongoose and his mindset was to fight the mongoose a certain way and set himself up, and then now he's changing to fight Matt Korobov, and Matt Korobov was training to fight Charlo all the time, <laughs> and he was tucked away real nicely doing the training very quietly. Nobody would have been paying attention to Matt Korobov. Nobody would have down Matt Korobov because Matt Korobov wasn't really figured in the in the world middleweight division because at the time, you know, he got beat by Andy Lee and we he, he racked up some wins, but nobody really cared about Korobov, not in that sense. But now he's fighting Jamal Charlo all of a sudden. He's right back in there. Red alert. That's all I'm saying. Jamal Charlo should win this fight if he is what he says he is, the 160 king. But believe me, if Matt Korobov's got a chance in this fight, he's going to take it with both hands, quite literally. You've been warned. All right? This boxing business, I've seen it so many times. People pull out, late replacements come in, and then end up knocking out the guy that's expected to win the fight. Happens. <laughs> late replacements. This in itself is a main, is, is what I would call a main event fight. Korobov Charlo. It's a main event fight. This ain't an undercard fight. Charlo, you know, that's the thing that makes it for me even more, you know, the eyebrows go up. This is a fight. So, and Korobov is not going to come and just lay down. There's too much on the table here. So, um, I don't know. He might not have the stamina to go six rounds. He might. It, it might genuinely be a case of Korobov got the call. He was in a gym, messing around, you know, training, ticking over, waiting for a fight to come, and he got the fight. It could be that. But it could also be boys been training for ages in the gym, waiting for the Charlo fight, knowing the Charlo fight was going to happen, knowing how, the, how it would set up. They might say, you know what? Listen, we've got a big fight coming up for you soon. Keep in the gym, keep ticking over, keep working. You're going to be fight, you'll be facing a puncher. And you're in the gym, you're training. He's, he's orthodox, he'll be a puncher. So, are you prepared to face a puncher? Yeah, I'll face a puncher. Get in the gym, just keep ticking over. You're in the train, keep ticking over, keep ticking over, keep ticking over. Keep ticking over, keep ticking over, keep ticking over. And then you get the call. Oh, you know what? You're fighting Charlo. Yeah, William Monroe pulled out. Yeah, you failed a drugs test. You want to fight? Oh, yeah, I'll take that opportunity. You're going to pay, get paid good money for this fight, yeah? And guess what? Listen, you take this fight and you win this fight, you're right in the big time again. You beat Charlo. He's, got a, he's getting a big name. You beat him. You know, interim middleweight champion. You're right back up there, buddy. You see how that telephone call can go? <laughs> Listen, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just being a realist. 
and in boxing anything like this. This, see right here? What I see right here, pardon my French, it's what I call shyster stuff. Shyster stuff. Real shyster stuff. So, for those who don't understand what shyster means, it's like German, I think, means for basic shit. It's a sort of like typical stuff in boxing that you should get uh, become aware of and enlightened with. So that's it. Good luck to Jamal Charlo on the night and good luck to Matt Korobov in a f for the fight. Matt Korobov, great opportunity for him. Jamal Charlo, a great opportunity for him too to prove himself as one of the 165s. The thing is, check this out. This is how this fight will go. If Charlo knocks out Korobov inside a few rounds, they'll say, well, Korobov, well, he got done by Andy Lee and he wasn't anything great and he's not one of the elite fighters. Check this. But if Korobov kicks Charlo's ass, you're going to get, well, Charlo was hype and uh, yeah, Korobov was always a, a top middleweight anyway and bloody, bloody, you know how the, you know how it goes in boxing already. So, you're being warned, boxing fans. You're being warned. But I hope Jamal Charlo wins the fight just for excitement. Somebody, Korobov's not going to, Korobov's a good boxer and all the rest of it and credit to him. But he's not going to set the, the, he's not going to set the vision on light. He's not going to be up in the camera's face. He's not going to be playing the bad guy. He's not going to be, and you need characters in boxing. And Jamal Charlo is that character in boxing. Jamal Charlo is like a wrestler. He's like the, He's like the Booker T of wrestling, you know? I don't know, something like that. You know what I mean? But you know the media. You know how boxing media are. You know who does the reporting. You know you know all their agendas already. So, so that's what it is. And uh, most of you do follow. So it is what it is. So I don't speak what you like me to speak. I speak what I see. And I'm not following anybody else's script. So... And I've not got any agendas. I'm not doing this for views. I'm not doing this for subscribers. I'm doing this because I see it. So I'm saying it. That being said, may the best man win. This has been BWTM Sports. And by the way, before I go, I want you to do two things for me. Double check and see if you are subscribed. And you'll get your notifications. If you're not getting notifications, make sure you click the button, the bell, the icon to make sure you get notifications. But I do believe that over the last two to three days, YouTube has been very naughty and it's been going over and knocking people's subscribers off. That means they've been not deleting people's subscribers, which they consider spam. So you could be considered spam. So if you listen to this video, Click the subscribe button. It's interesting. YouTube are playing games at the moment, but it's all right. We keep working. You take care and much love to you all. And shout out to my man, Razor Ramon. The best there was, the best there is, the best there ever will be. From the bad guy, I'm out. Take care.